Shalom. I want to start off by saying Kal Halal Yom La Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai by Hashem Merikah Kodesh. Double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone for teaching us the truth and who will well. Peace and citations unto the Akim that is spread around the four corners of the earth, spreading his word in sincerity and in truth. Shalom to the whole Philelect. I'm the brother Kwatazab Zehan from the GMS Holland branch, coming back through the spirit and power of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai with another lesson, with another video. And Lord willing, this video is edifying. In this video, I want to go into Isaiah 35, verse 8, on down, and it reads, And the highway shall be there, and the way, and it shall be called the way of holiness. The unclean shall not pass over it, but it shall be for those the wayfaring men, though fools shall not err therein. So let me read it again, because the thing is, Yahweh, which Yahweh is the name of the Heavenly Father, He's going to create a way for the ones that are doing their best on this side to be holy, to separate themselves from the world, because that's what it means to be holy, to, to be separated from the, the ways of this world. You see? So the Most High is going to create a way to escape. He's going to create a highway. And what is that highway? Let's go to... Isaiah forty verse three. This is Isaiah forty and three. The voice of him that cried in the wilderness, which is John the Baptist, prepare ye the way of the Lord, prepare ye the way of Yahweh, make straight in the desert a highway for our power. You see? So John the Baptist was uh, announcing the coming of Yahweh Shai because Yahweh Shai is that way to get out of this uh, hellhole on this side. You know, Yahweh Yah sent his son, Yahweh Shai, who everybody ignorantly calls Jesus. The Most High sent Yahweh Shai as a highway to escape, you see, to come from this kingdom from this this filthy upside down perverse kingdom to the highway that leads to the kingdom of Yashar Allah which Yah is he and Shar is prince and Allah is power the kingdom of Israel Yashar Allah in the the Lashawan Kodash in the Hebrew you see so the Most High he created that way and Yahweh is that highway and it also said the unclean shall not go therein Isaiah 35 verse 8 and a highway shall be there and a way and it shall be called the way of holiness the way of Yahweh the unclean, unclean shall not pass over it why? let me see Revelations Revelation 22 With me for a second. Yeah. This is Revelation twenty two, verse ten. The final message. And he said unto me, Seal not the sayings of the prophecy of this book, for the time is at hand. So now the, the truth is unlocked. The, the book, which is the Bible, you know, the prophecies of the Bible, they are known. They have been made known to the servants, the prophets, like it says in Amos 3. <clears throat> the Most High will do nothing, but he shows the secrets unto the servants, the prophets. So now the prophecies have been unlocked. You see? And the time is at hand. So the, the book is not sealed anymore. Verse 11. He that is unjust, let him be unjust still. And he that is which is filthy, let him be filthy still. You see? And that's speaking about these two-thirds, man. The ones that are hearing this and still want to go in, in the way of their lust and their flesh. And they don't want to sanctify themselves. They don't want to make themselves clean. Because that's what it means to be sanctified. They don't want to... Uh, 
uh, make themselves holy by separating themselves from uh, abominations and from the ways of this world. That's what it means to be holy. Let them just be unjust and filthy still. Let them be unclean still. Because when Yahweh Shai comes, he is that highway and he's going to come with his reward. The, the, the ones that are doing their best on this side, they are going to go with Yahweh Shai. The ones that didn't listen and take heed, they are going to be burnt up with the rest of this world. Revelation 22 verse 11. He that is unjust, let him be unjust still. And he that is filthy, let him be filthy still. And he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. And he that is holy, let him be holy still. Verse, 20, verse uh, 12. And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me, to give every man according to his work, as his work shall be. You see? I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Come on. So... Yahusha, he was the first Adam, he was the beginning, you know, and he is also the last, he's the last Adam, he's, he's the one that is going to put everything right side up again. Verse 14, blessed are they that do his commandments, do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. See, you're going to enter enter into the gates into the city through the highway, through Yahweh Shai, through the salvation. You see? Yahweh Shai, he's going to he's our salvation. He's that highway that's going to lead us into the gates into the city. And the city is of course the kingdom of heaven. And we are going to have right to the tree of life, which is ultimate wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. All the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. You see? So let me go to Isaiah. Isaiah 11, verse 16. And there shall be an highway for the remnant of his people. For the, Because the remnant, that's the, that's the remainder. That, those are, let's go into that word, man. remnant which is Sha'ar and the outline of biblical use it says rest residue remnant remainder you see remainder and a residue so the ones that remain because uh, the scripture says the children of Israel are going to be as the sand of the sea but still a small remnant a remainder is going to be that is going to separate themselves in the end times and in these times that we live in because if you look at our people, our people are completely bugged out and destroyed in their head, in their mind. You see? And if you go into the root word, Sha'ar, to remain, to be left over, to be left alive, to survive. You see? We are going to survive Esau. Just like how they make that movie, uh, uh, Surviving R. Kelly. You know, how they always are, are sort of blackmailing our people, you know, looking, uh, making it seem like our people are always the wicked, the wicked ones, the demons, you know, they made that uh, surviving R. Kelly documentary, but we are the ones that are going to survive Esau. We are going to survive Esau's uh, queendom, his upside down kingdom, you see, we have to separate ourselves and survive this. And also the times that are to come, the perilous times that are to come, Jacob's trouble, a remnant, a remainder, a residue is going to make it. And that remainder consists of the 144,000 and the innumerable multitude. They are going to make it through this hellhole. So going back, Isaiah 11 verse 16, and there shall be a highway which Hawasha is that highway for the remnant of his people which shall be left from Assyria like as it was to Israel in the day that he came out of the land of Egypt you see so like when we came out of the land of Egypt which that was also Hawasha that guided us in that time 
and this time he's also going to guide us through this captivity through because the time of egypt that was seen as the iron furnace because we went through a rigorous captivity and this captivity is is, is even worse you know so let's go to first corinthians 10 to show you that just like in the time of egypt yeah, I wish I was that highway, and now also, yeah, I wish I is going to be that highway, that, that way of salvation. First Corinthians 10, verse 1. Moreover, brethren, I would not that ye should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea. With the emphasis on all, all of Israel got uh, saved in that time. But this, this time around, not all of Israel is going to make it. Because two-thirds, like we just read, the unclean are going to be burnt up. They are going to uh, not pass through this highway this time, you see? Reading on. And we're all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea. Because that cloud, that cloud was a chariot. He had a pillar by fire, uh, a pillar of fire at night which was in the back, and a cloud by day, which was in the front. You see, so those uh, chariots were guiding us. Verse 3, And did all eat the same spiritual meat, which, that, which was that angel's bread, the manna, and did all drink the same spiritual drink. For they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was Yahweh Shai. You see, Yahweh Shai was there. Yahweh Shai was there following us, guiding us, leading us, you see, out of Egypt. Yahweh Shai was always there guiding his people. And the same thing is going to happen this time around also. Let's go to Isaiah. Isaiah 35, verse 8 again. And a highway shall be there, and a way, and it shall be called the way of holiness, which is Yahweh Shai. The unclean shall not pass over it, which that's the two-third, like it says in uh, the book of Zechariah. Let me grab that real quick. Zechariah, what was it, 13? Verse 8. And it shall come to pass that in all the land, which all the land is America, said Jehovah, two parts therein shall be cut off and die, but a third shall be left therein. So that's the two thirds of our nation that is going to be cut off and is going to die on this side. And one third, which is the remnant, that's going to make it. The unclean shall not pass over it, but it shall be for those, the wayfaring men, though fools shall not err therein. So the wayfaring men, that those are the 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 yeah, how should I say it? The ones that are trying to separate themselves, the ones that are transitioning from this kingdom to the next kingdom, the ones that are in that on that spiritual road, you know. Because that's what it means to be a pilgrim, for example. Because we are in the pilgrimage right now. We are walking the spiritual road into a holy place. Because that's what it means to be a pilgrim. <clears throat> pilgrim. 12, uh, 1200. A person traveling to a holy place. And we are traveling towards that holy place, which is the kingdom of heaven. <clears throat> a traveler, a wayfarer, you see? So that's why it says in Isaiah 35, the wayfaring men, that's us, you see? Our people, we are always moving around. We are always in camps, we are always in tents until the Most High established us 
like hey this is uh, the country the this is the the land that you are going to stay in you see because the most high we were a people before we were uh put in a place before we were a place the most high made he didn't make the place for us let me just go to that scripture maccabees Mac, uh, second Maccabees 5 verse 19 nevertheless Yahweh Bashem Yahushai did not choose the people for the place's sake see so the most high then chose the people because of the place the place isn't more important than the people the people are the ones that are important and then he put them there you know to give them rest to hedge them to, 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 to uh, yeah to hedge them to protect them so second Maccabees 5 verse 19 nevertheless Yahweh Bashem Yahushai did not choose the people for the place's sake not because of the place he chose the people but the place for the people's sake you see so the most high he uh, um, established us first as a nation as a people and then he put us in that land because we were constantly continually traveling and now still we are the, the the captive exile you see as it's going to say though fools that's also another point in first corinthians let me see this is This is First Corinthians one verse eighteen. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved, it is the power of Yahweh Bashem You see, so to people that, from the outward appearance, when they look at us, that we are preaching about Yahweh Shai coming back, we are preaching about Yahweh being a so-called dark-skinned man taking this this Bible and, and and digesting it and also teaching it to people that's foolishness and they're like what, what are you doing with your time you could you can jump on some money you can do this you can do that and get a get a useful hobby or whatnot to them this is foolishness but to us it is uh, but unto us which are saved it is the power of Yahweh you see that's the power we see these things these people are, are walking dead they don't see the truth they don't see what is happening around them verse 25 1 Corinthians 1 and 25 because the foolishness of Yahweh Bashem Yahushai is wiser than man and the weakness of Yahweh Bashem Yahushai is stronger than men you see so the foolish, the, the things that are foolish in the sight of Yahweh Bashem Yahushai is still wiser than a normal man. You see? Verse 27, But Yahweh Bashem Yahushai had chosen the foolish things of the, of the world to confound the wise. He chose us, you know, people that are seen as nothing you know we were nobodies but he uses the foolish he uses us to confound the wise the ones that are in the the noble ones the ones that are sitting in high places we confound them we, we, we cut them with these words that we say the truth that we bring out and Yahweh Bashem Yahushai had chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty see Isaiah 35 verse 9 No lion shall be there nor any rave, ravenous beast shall go up thereon it shall not be found there but the redeemed shall walk there 
You see, so nobody is going to disrupt this walk that these men are going to walk on that highway. Esau is not going to be able to stop us. Nothing is going to be able to stop us. These these other nations, they they won't be able to do anything. You see, there's not going to be a threat on that highway. But the redeemed shall walk thereby. The redeemed shall walk there. So let's go into that word redeemed, which is Gaal. Gaal. The outline of Biblical usually says to, to redeem at, as kinsman, redeemer, to avenge, to revenge. So Yahweh Bashem Yahshai has said, vengeance is his. He's going to avenge us. You see? Ransom. And what is ransom? Ransom is a sum paid. And who paid our ransom? Yahweh Shai. He paid our ransom with his blood. I'm going to fix this that I can see the meaning of these words immediately. Now here. Israel from Egyptian bondage. We are the Israelites that are in Egyptian bondage right now because um, in the book of Deuteronomy 28, it says we will go into Egypt again with ships. So Egypt was there in um, the Middle East. So how and why would we go to Egypt with ships if you could go on foot or whatnot, you know, by chariot or whatnot? No, it wasn't talking about that captivity. It was talking about this captivity that we are going to be in under the... the, the we would go through the transatlantic slave trade via ships to the Middle America, North America, South America, to the to to the Caribbean, to um, Europe, you know, Spain. That's where they scattered us. That's that Egyptian bondage that we are in right now. Because if you go into that word Egypt, in the Lashwan Kodash, in the Hebrew, it's Matazaryam, which means to be in double straits, to be to be in difficulty, to be in a double dip difficulty, and also. We would go to Egypt, which is the house of bondage. This is um, Exodus 20, verse 2. I am Yahweh thy power, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. You see, so Egypt is synonymous with the house of bondage, being in captivity. And also it says, Israel from exile. Why? Because we have been exiled. We have been exiled out of our land. We have been exiled out of Israel. You see, uh, what was it, 70 AD, they came and ransacked, Jerusalem, they tore down the temples, and they and we fled. We fled into the into the mountains, which the mountains represent the the south of Jerusalem, which is Africa, West Africa. We fled into West Africa, escaping Roman persecution. So we are those exiled Israelites. And like we just said, we are in captivity. So like, yeah. This is Isaiah 51, verse 14. The captive exile. You see, we are captive. We are in this house of bondage. We are in double straits and we are exiled from Israel. Hasten that he may be loosed. We want to get out of this this place. We want to get out of this captivity. We want to get out of this hellhole, this this low state that we are in, and that he should not die in the pit, nor that his bread should should fail. Gone, because we we have to um, um, basically beg for our bread. We have to work every day, you know, wipe the sweat off of our foreheads just for 
to make ends meet, you know. These devils and these other nations are making it so hard for us to just to get by. Isaiah 35, verse 10. And the ransom of Yahweh shall return, like we just went into, redeemed. It's also the same as ransom. As you have to pay a sum to redeem uh, um, something. And in this case, that something is us. We are the Israelites that have been redeemed by the blood of Yahweh Shai. We have been bought back. And come to Zion with songs and everlasting joy upon their heads. They shall obtain joy and gladness and sorrow and sighing shall free from them. You see? So we are not going to sigh anymore, mope anymore, murmur anymore because of the situation that we're in. No, we're going to flourish. We're going to be beautified. You see? We're going to be beautiful, man. We're going to be... Uh, Words can't even express. I don't even know how, how beautiful it's going to be. The Most High, He has said so, and it will be so. You see? Like it says, Eye has not, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard for what the Most High has prepared for you. Roughly paraphrasing. Zechariah 9. Mm. Yeah. Until 13. Let me use something else. Zechariah 9, verse 11. As for thee, uh, the title of this, this is this paragraph, is Deliverance of Judah and Ephraim. You see? Deliverance of the southern tribes and deliverance of the northern tribes. You are going to be made one nation again. Zechariah 9 and 11. As for thee also, by the blood of thy covenant, I have sent forth thy prisoners out of the pit, wherein is no water. Turn ye to the stronghold, ye prisoners of hope. Even today do I declare that I will render double unto thee. And I have bent Judah for me, filled the bow with Ephraim, and raised up thy sons, O Zion, against thy sons, O Greece, and made thee as a sword of a mighty man. God, we are going to take the kingdom. The Most High is going to fuse us, fuse Judah and Ephraim, the northern tribes and the uh, southern tribes. He's, we're going to fuse together and become a destructive weapon for the sons of Greece the sons of Greece originally those were the Japhites but in this case they are um, Esau because Esau he steals everybody's um, uh, how do you call it identity he wants to be everybody's everybody's uh, identity so he, he took that upon him and now the scriptures is pointing out to him you know when the Most High has taken his sons which are the Israelites, northern tribe and southern tribe, Judah and, and Ephraim. Judah is the head of the southern tribes and Ephraim is the head of the northern tribes. When we are combined, we are going to fight against the sons of Greece, which is in this case Esau. And we shall be as a sword of mighty men. You see? Let me go to the last scripture, Revelation 5, verse 9. And they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof. And that's uh, Yahweh Shai. He was the only one that had, that could open the book, that could open the Bible. He brought the truth back to the children of Israel. He brought the truth back on this earth. For thou wast slain and had, hast redeemed us, brought us back. To Yahweh by Shemayoshai, by thy blood, out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation, after, uh, by through all the places that we have been scattered, we have been brought back. That's why it says in Revelation 7 that 
there was a noble multitude, a great multitude with different kindreds and different tongues. That's the Israelites that have gone and, like I just read, you know, we are the captive exiled. We have been kicked out of, out of the land and we have been taken captive in all these other nations, all these other uh, lands, countries. And we went to these other countries. For example, I, myself, I came from Suriname to Holland, you know, so I speak Dutch. I wear these uh, Dutch clothing, so I speak a different tongue, but I'm an Israelite. You see? So that's how that works. That's how you see very different tongues and different people, but their lineage goes to Israel. So yeah, man. I hope this video is edifying. And I want to say, Kal Halal Yam La Yahweh, Basham Yahushai, Basham Rekha Kodash, Shalom Akim.